the way I want to start this is by sharing my story of how I came about all the work that I'm doing today and what I had to go through to become more emotionally self-aware. So you may not know this, but I was a trial lawyer for 22 years before uh, I changed. And I went back to school mid-career to earn my master's degree in peacemaking and complex studies. And I left the practice of law in 2000 to become a peacemaker and mediator. The problem that I faced, and I knew I had this problem for years, but I really never knew how to fix it, was that because of my upbringing and the fact that I was born with some pretty severe disabilities, I had a really difficult childhood and adolescence uh, emotionally. And I became aloof and arrogant as a way of dealing with all of my emotional pain. And I was, of course, extremely emotionally defended and emotionally unavailable. And I had a bright intellect. So that got me ultimately through law school, which was a perfect career and is the career for people who are aloof and arrogant and smart. Uh, because the law, like many other professions, uh, relies on critical thinking and rationality and emotions don't have any place there except when you're making an argument to the jury. Well, that's what I thought. So for 22 years, I lived that life. Very successful trial lawyer, tried a lot of cases, but I was really miserable as a human being. Um, my, merit, my first marriage didn't go so well. And ultimately, I came across a book called Undefended Love by Jet Sarsis, which I can recommend. And Jet and her partner are therapists in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and they really got a really cool approach to this work. I went up and had a session with Jet, and then I took a workshop from her. And the one thing that really stood out from me in this workshop was the idea that you should never run from your emotions. If you have an intense emotional experience, what you should do, assuming you're in a place where you can do it, is allow yourself to dive deep into that pool, into that emotional pool. And they, what they, they described it as a situation where you feel like you're gonna be annihilated. I mean, you just don't feel like you're ever gonna come out of it again. But emotions only last three or four minutes. And they described the idea of when you do this and you just confront your emotions and ride them and don't fight them and just absorb them and expand them and make them your total existence for three or four minutes, they will break their release on you. They'll break their hold on you. Well, I understood this intellectually. And one day, several years later, many years later, really, I was driving up the highway to my mountain home and I passed the road where I used to live. And I was all of a sudden overcome with incredible waves of grief. I mean, it was overwhelming. Now, what I would have done in the past is I would have just pushed it down. And I said, you know, I can tough through this and you know, I'm not gonna feel this. But this time I decided to do something different. I pulled over to the side of the road and I just allowed myself to do what Jet had described for me, which is dive into the grief and the sadness and the full emotional experience. And I did, and it was, I did feel like I was gonna be annihilated. Yeah, it took courage because you really feel like you're going, your existence is gonna be snuffed out by this overwhelming emotional experience. But just like she said, the experience, you go very deep and then you come up for air and it's all over with. And the emotion passed. It was like a gigantic wave. It finally passed. I came back to normal reality. And I was that emotional charge, all that sadness and grief that I'd accumulated over many, 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 over 50 years of, of, of charge had completely dissipated. And that's when I began to become emotionally self-aware. And I think that's the, 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 the big secret. Now, why is it that we don't do this? Well, we don't do this because our culture is biased against emotions. We live under the myth of rationality that human beings are rational and not emotional. We have an educational system that does not teach us how to become emotionally competent. We are raised in families that for the most part are emotionally incompetent and raise emotionally incompetent children to become emotionally incompetent adults and emotionally incompetent parents. Uh, and we emotionally invalidate each other. We constantly put down and dismiss and judge and criticize each other for having emotional experiences. So that the 
entire environment that we live in and grew up in is all anti-emotional. And we and no one is ever out there to guide us and teach us and coach us how to deal with these really strong, difficult emotions like grief and despair and sadness and abandonment and feeling unloved and worthless. So fortunately, there are teachers like um, Jet out there who have the wisdom to see through all of this and guided me through this initially. And then I had to, but at the end of the day, you have to do it on your own. And the secret really is having the courage to just find a quiet time and dive into that, what looks like a cesspool and just wallow in it. And that's that way you come out the other side clean and clear. And you be, you're no longer afraid of your emotions. And now you can start developing the tools that will allow you to be emotionally competent.